Thank you very much. Um, this is Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite Dr. Francis Ago, MPHCSA, Senior Advisor to the Minister of for Sustainable Development and Conservation, and also as Acting Chairman for Indonesia Sustainable Tourism Council. We would like to have him online. Yeah, good afternoon. To... Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam salam sejahtera, om swastiastu, nama budaya, salam kebajikan. Salam Indonesia Maju. Dear friends, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and participants of World Health Network. Uh, tourism has become an essential sector in supporting the development of tourism uh, in Indonesia. So, however, uh, the environmental impacts of this sector has grown increasingly alarming. The need for sustainable tourism and the capitalization has emerged as a pressing for global challenge nowadays. Uh, so my, my topic is still in line with the sustainable tourism and also the capitalization. Uh, the negative impact of the conventional tourism as we are facing today is uh, on the environmental and the local communities, encourage the importance of transition uh, towards uh, sustainable tourism, emphasizing uh, the importance of reducing carbon emission, uh, preserving uh, biodiversity, and also respecting cultural heritage. So, uh, the concept of sustainable tourism, as we adopt, really pay attention to sustainable management, social sustainability, social cultural sustainability, as well as environmental sustainability. By paying attention and implementing these four pillars, uh, tourism can be developed sustainably by maintaining a balance uh, between environmental protection, community welfare, and conservation. Sustainable tourism can provide important contribution, such as uh, make a more positive contribution to the preservation of natural and cultural heritage and the maintenance of the world diversity. Uh, provide a more enjoyable experience for tourists to more meaningful relationship with the local communities. Providing access for people with disabilities and disadvantages. Minimize negative economic and environmental as well as social impact and generate a greater economic benefits for local communities and improve the welfare of the host communities as well as working conditions and access to industries. So, uh, the implementation of the system of tourism, as we already know, that we uh, take into account several aspects including uh, environmental friendly transportation, offset carbon emission, uh, calculating uh, our carbon footprint, renewable energy, water management, recycling, reuse of used items, eco-friendly design, reduce uh, air pollution, and also exposure uh, the information about environmental friendly practices, and local environmentally friendly products. Well, ladies and gentlemen, since uh, 2015, uh, the Ministry of uh, Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia, together with the all stakeholders, has been committed uh, to realizing sustainable tourism development programs with a more concrete way through flagship programs such as sustainable tourism destination, uh, sustainable tourism observatories in collaboration with the International Network on Sustainable Tourism Observatories uh, by UNWTO, sustainable tourism certification for destination and uh, tourism village recognized by uh, Global Sustainable Tourism Council. Sustainable tourism industries, sustainable responsible marketing, and last but not least is 
susceptible to some management. In line with this, uh, our effort in the communication in the tourism sector is very critical to mitigate uh, the tourism contribution to climate change. It, it, it involves uh, reducing or eliminating carbon emissions by implementing sustainable transportation, energy efficiency in accommodation, renewable energy, carbon offsetting, waste reduction, and recycling. System production planning, promoting local product, and promoting system production certification and standard. In 2022, uh, Indonesia is the first ASEAN country to sign the best declaration, showing a commitment to achieve net zero emissions. Uh, the Ministry of Tourism and Plant Economy also set up or launch a pilot project destination uh, toward uh, net zero declaration. Some appointed pilot projects, such as uh, Plataran in Taman Nasional Bali Barat, Mangrove uh, Terkuda Bersedi in East Kalimantan, Rab, uh, Pante Tiawarna in Maram, it is a uh, Maman Conservation, Bukit Paraman uh, Wales in the Bangka Belitung. And the uh, last is uh, Taman Wisata Mangro, Klabalu, uh, Sorong in Papua. So therefore, Indonesia, in collaboration with the Jijang Inn, is a, an Indonesian startup a company with a vision to fight our climate change, to commit uh, in a sustainable initiative to promote a carbon footprint calculation and climatization in tourism industries. In this collaboration, as an effort to measure carbon footprint towards a climate positive tourism through the communication and eco tourism and support the global commitment, at least to gain 50% emission by 2030 and reach the net zero by 2050. A climate action program and Aligning climate uh, action in accordance with the five declaration lines of action on the less goal declaration, such as uh, measurements, uh, decarbonization, regeneration, collaboration, and finance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are some uh, key highlights of the program that is being carried out in order to implement uh, our sustainable tourism and also the communication in tourism sectors in Indonesia. First, of course, uh, we set up the guidelines for managing uh, plastic waste in marine tourism destination, and also uh, guidelines for sustainable tourism destinations. And we also conduct uh, the sustainable tourism certification for destination and also for tourism village across the country, and also we are hosting a tourism village abroad, uh, we call the Academy, uh, implement the carbon footprint of nature and offsetting, JHSA, CHSE certification, Canadians have a safety and environmental sustainability certification, development of uh, eco tourism, gay tourism, and other natural. Uh, related uh, tourism, waste management uh, program, no plastic and paints and food waste and zero waste, and also the application of the renewable energy, including electric cars, green energy, and water management in some priority destinations across the country, as well as the green energy, green economy, and green financing scheme, uh, and sustainable tourism a program uh, for industries. So with the uh, policies and program, as well as a collaboration with the various parties, all the stakeholders uh, within the country, and also uh, some partners from overseas. So Indonesia Sustainable Tourism Council, together with the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. So we can uh, strengthen the Indonesia's vision uh, to become an epicenter of sustainable tourism hub 
in the Asia Pacific regions. So, ladies and gentlemen, by implementing uh, seasonal tourism, I think that we are an ongoing process. It is about the journey that requires a strong commitment, political commitment, collaboration, and adaptability. By following this process, states and the journey, and also involving all the stakeholders. So we hope that uh, destination and tourism in Indonesia can work toward a future where tourism benefits for the environment, local communities, and the industry as a whole. So thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam. Om Santi Santi Santi. Thank you, and uh, he's the uh, expert staff of the Minister for Crisis Management, Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy of Indonesia. Time is yours. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you all. Uh, welcome to Bali. Welcome to the island of God. Welcome to Indonesia. Especially for Peter. This is your first time here in Bali. So enjoy Bali. And tell me if there is any kind of precious potential if you uh, meet uh, the case or meet something that you assume that will be uh, or will become a potential crisis of tourism. So please tell me. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, Dr. Franz Tugu has already uh, delivered the remarks representing uh, our ministry. So now let me introduce myself. My name is Fajar, Fajar Utomo, or you can call me Tommy. Uh, I am a senior advisor to minister for crisis management. So in this opportunity, in this occasion, I would like to uh, deliver my, my uh, thing, my talk, my opinion about uh, what is, uh, yeah, this is me. I would like to uh, share with you about uh, tourism crisis management model that under the umbrella of building the sustainable and quality tourism in Indonesia, I think uh, Indonesia should be should promote uh, good practice, a good management in uh, crisis management. I always say that tourism is not only about beauty, but also safety. I think there is no use, there is no meaning about the beauty if you have no uh, safety in your uh, delivery of uh, tourism services because no one, no one wants to bring their family to the destination that have no uh, safety on the uh, area. Okay, so what is crisis management model? Um, tourism areas are valuable assets for the state and local communities in Indonesia, but they are also vulnerable to various threats such as natural disasters, especially in Indonesia. Indonesia is on the ring of fire. We have a unique landscape here in Indonesia that yeah, we have so many natural disasters. Every 
year, even every time about uh, earthquake, the risk of tsunami, the risk of uh, landslide. Yeah. And like uh, France said, we also face the potential crisis of marine pollution about uh, bad waste management, maybe uh, Bali as well, also <laughs> face the problem of uh, plastic waste. Yeah. Benar ya Ibu? And, of, and also, like what we already faced years, two years, before COVID, all over the world uh, face the crisis, the health crisis, especially. Therefore, the development and implementation of an effective crisis management model is a key in maintaining the sustainability and safety of the destination. Uh, France told us about the importance of uh, sustainable, how, how to deliver sustainability in our tourism management. If we fail to deliver the sustainable practices in our tourism management, so we will uh, face the crisis, right? So, in the perspective of the government regulation, Indonesia, by the Minister, by the Ministry of Tourism, we have Minister of Tourism Regulation Number 10 of 2019 concerning tourism crisis management. Tourism crisis is a condition that has a negative influence on the performance of the tourism ecosystem caused by natural and non-natural factors. Tourism crisis management is a systemic approach that aims to build the capacity of the tourism ecosystem in preparing, res responding, and recovering from a crisis. The reliability of the tourism sector in handling crisis conditions is one of the main criteria in building sustainable and internationally competitive tourism. But yes, unfortunately, many destinations, especially in Indonesia, for now, when they build, when they prepare the destination, the focus is still on the beauty. So they do the beautification of the destination as well as promotion. But there is a lack on the readiness, on the awareness of uh, crisis management. And safety management as well. There is so many cases that happen. There are so many cases that happen about the traffic accident, about the coastal accident, marine accident, and of course about the foreign habit here in Bali that face uh, so many uh, cases recently. So all the stakeholders of Bali tourism should be uh, hand in hand, should be in uh, collaborative manners to deliver the services, the services in uh, tourism industry. There are so many aspects on the crisis management model. The first is tourist safety aspects. The crisis management model helps protect the safety and security of tourists visiting tourism areas or tourism destination. This include evacuation planning, first aid, and protection against potential threats. And the second one, of the aspects is environmental protection aspects. 
The reason area often have vulnerable ecosystem. Crisis management models can help minimize negative impacts on the natural environment, including effort to reduce pollution and environmental damage during crisis situations. The third aspect of the crisis management model in tourism is the aspect of economic sustainability. Tourism is often a major source of income for local communities. In crisis situation, effective management can help accelerate economic recovery, minimize losses, and maintain employment. There are so many cases in Indonesian tourism destination development. There is a social gap between the investor, foreign investor, the Jakarta investor, with the local communities. So, with the implementation of inclusive business models that include the local community, the local efforts, the local small and medium enterprise, I think this risk, this crisis can be The fourth is the aspect of credibility and image of the destination. A good response to the crisis can strengthen the positive image of, of course, not marine uh, tourism destination only, but all of the uh, theme of tourism destination. In the eyes of tourists and the global market, Conversely, poor management can have a long-term impact on the region's uh, reputation. Here in Indonesia, we have so many uh, destinations instead of Bali, of course, as a main, our main destination in Indonesia. We have Belitu, we have Raja Ampat in Papua, we have Labuan Bajo, we have Wakatobi, and of course we have Bali, Sumba, Yunewet, Banyuwangi. It is a lot of things to do for us in Indonesia to develop the Indonesia uh, tourism destination as a sustainable tourism destination and then the last one is the aspect of readiness for the future trends with a solid a solid crisis management model tourism areas can be better prepared for future trends including climate change and possible health crisis in addition to handling crisis as they occur the crisis management models also includes effort to prevent and mitigate potential threats. This can reduce the risk of a crisis. When we have a lunch, I sit near Peter, and Peter told me that crisis management is a tough job because if we doing well, mitigate the crisis, and then the crisis is not happen. Somebody will say it or will ask that we don't have or we don't need you because there is no crisis. But if the crisis happen, then somebody will say, what do you do? What did you do about the crisis? Yeah, that is true, better. Thank you for reminding us. The government of Indonesia by the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy now introducing the tools to measure the resilient 
index, the index of resiliency in our uh, destination, especially on the rural or village uh, tourism. Tourist village in Indonesia, we have a project in collaboration with Indonesian University and uh, Kobe University. We deliver, we implement the tools to measure the index of the uh, resiliency on our destination. The last one I would like to say is because of tourism is a, is an ecosystem. Tourism is an ecosystem. So tourism involves many stakeholders, many minister, many sector. So we have to promote collaborative governance to do or to deliver the destination management organization in Indonesia. Here is the model for collaborative governance. The starting condition now is because there is a power resource knowledge asymmetries. There is a lack of knowledge among the stakeholders and because of that we need incentive for and constraint on the participation of the stakeholders and of course the prehistory of cooperation or conflict for example if we talk about Taman National or National Park in Indonesia because there is so many destinations in Indonesia is on the uh, <coughs> under the authority of Ministry of Environment and Forestry by the Taman National. Ministry of Tourism actually there is they have no we, we have no authorities about the uh, landscape management of the uh, Taman National or National Park. And if we talk about Marine National Park in the beach or, the, or in the coastal, there is a Ministry of KKP, Marine Ministry. They have the authority to do the management in a coastal area or in the beach as well as in accessibility in transportation there is a ministry of transportation so that's the fact that we face now if there is an accident about Tourism, for instance, uh, tourism bus transportation. Just because of our logo in the wonderful Indonesia is on the buses, so they always think that the Ministry of Tourism that should be. Uh, taking the responsibility of this matter actually not because we have no authority on that but yes on the perspective of how to deliver the good services in the tourism industry in Indonesia so we do the coordination among the uh, stakeholders among the department among the ministry to hand in hand together in collaborative manner to deliver the tourism management uh, destination. By the collaborative process of trust building, face-to-face -face dialogue, commitment to the process, shared understanding and intermediate outcomes 
and by support of the leadership of the uh, leader, central leader of the uh, Indonesian government, as well as the regional leadership of the governor of the uh, Upati, uh, the major. So we try to make sure that we will get the outcome of the new way of working, new structural arrangement, and the integration of the process. It is a big humble of Indonesian government to do with the all stakeholders to deliver destination a good practice the excellent practice of the destination management organization so thank you for your coming for your all attention to come to bali from far away to discuss about the the important topics i think Moody. thank you for your initiative thank you for your uh, support there are many things we have to do and we should uh, sit together but not only sit we have to uh, do the collaborative governance so i will i will support you to to organize to uh, meet with many actors so many uh, multi stakeholders in indonesia like you said about the tourist uh, tourism police in indonesia yes we have uh, we have such a problem with the, our tourist tourism police ability how to handle how to face the uh, tourists how to angry in english there is a problem because uh, so many cases uh, from release are coming from misunderstanding uh, between the foreign visitors and the local communities as well as uh, local police and of course yes we have a problem of food safety here in Bali actually not, not just in Bali all over Indonesia, there is a hard work for uh, deliver the good food safety in our uh, food industry. So I think that's all my presentation. Thank you for these opportunities. Thank you for all the participants. Hopefully we can achieve uh, the benefit of this uh, forum this conference and we uh, do the more effective collaboration in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak for such a such useful insights. Thank you very much and this beautiful insight. Indeed, but uh, we agree with you that we need hand-in-hand -hand collaboration between government and also with the private sectors. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next, uh, we will have the Chief of Tourism Marketing for Bali Government Tourism Office, Ibu Ida Ayu Indah, Mr. Kalimini, will be delivering about the managing quality tourism. Please, time is yours. Thank you very much, my dear friend Ibu Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Fajar Kutomo as the senior advisor to um, the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia. And as Ibu Ratna said, uh, my name is Indah Yusikarini, uh, you can call me Indah. Uh, and my director uh, sent me to represent him and my apology. I didn't uh, prepare any uh, presentation, but uh, I will inform you what our office has done to create a sustainable tourism here in 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I sustainable and then quality and also cultural tourism. Um, those are the standards of tourism branding that we want to create here in Bali. Sustainable tourism for us is that it is not just benefits to the welfare or economy to people, but also how the tourism activities can be done without degrading or devalue our tourism potentials. As we know, in Bali, we have three main potential of tourism here. Those are, of course, culture, and then beautiful landscape, and also friendly people. But then the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, taught us a very difficult lesson that we then begin to focus more on health tourism. Um, that is why in Sanur area, the central government then begins to build a, an international hospital that will be offered actually to our local people here, Indonesia here because every year in the economy of Indonesia there is a leakage of 97.5 trillion Indonesian rupees because the Indonesian people love to seek um, health treatment abroad like they will go to Singapore, Malaysia, Korea or even uh, the United States so instead of uh, let them spend their money abroad, we want to stop that leakage. So that here, um, they build this kind of um, international hospital. So you can just go to Bali for that health tourism, not just for medical treatment, but also to enjoy the beautiful views in Bali. Um, and then Bali Island has been chosen by our central government to be the pilot project of this health tourism destination because Bali has this kind of hilly vibration um, as well of the friendly people and then as I said before beautiful landscape so when the patients are treated here in the hospitals their families or friends can come to see them as well as enjoy the beauty of Bali and moreover in Bali we have this kind of knowledge it is called as Usada Bali Usada is a cultural heritage the herbal plants to cure illnesses or health problems. Those uh, knowledge is ancient, written on uh, manuscripts of the Lontan leaves, and it is already aged hundreds of years and becomes uh, our Bali local wisdom. So we do think that this uh, traditional herbal medicine uh, can combined with the modern uh, medical treatment in this international hospital. Um, and then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in this international hospital of Samur, we will have this forest, ethno-botanical garden. So in this forest, it will be planted uh, the genuine or local plants of Bali that for a long time ago, it is used as medicines uh, for our people. And then uh, talking about crisis. Uh, recently, we have crisis because of tourists. So probably all of you have heard that in Bali, there are a lot of problematic tourists. They, they come to Bali, not just uh, to enjoy our uh, tourism activities here, but they have disrespected 
our regulations, and also our culture. And we, we cannot say that is a kind of sustainable tourism we want here. Because when we are talking about sustainable tourism, it means it is not just the destination that provides uh, good quality of services, but people or visitors who come to Bali also have to be quality. So then we work hand in hand the Bali government tourism office with the police department, with the immigration office, of course, we do a kind of like law enforcement because these tourists or the visitors told us we disrespect your culture or we uh, disobey your regulation or law because we have no idea that, that we cannot do that here in Bali. So that we make the do's and don'ts in Bali. We made a list. Uh, it is already in a QR code, quick response code. When you scan it, it will be in English, India, Japan, and Chinese. So that information is a kind of uh, educating and also uh, informing uh, the tourists to be the quality tourists here in Bali. And also our immigration office, our colleagues in immigration office, they are very busy to keep deporting people who has found out that they disrespect our culture or our regulations here. Because if we didn't do anything, those problematic tourists can degrade the tourism quality here in Bali. And we do not want that because it is not about the mass tourism again here in Bali, it is about the quality. We are not targeting about quantity again, but more to quality tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is all that I can say. Thank you very much for coming to Bali and you are all, I believe, is the kind of quality tourist that we want here to be in Bali. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, indeed, we need quality tourism rather than quantity tourism. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the next will be the Honorary Howard Sinan, would like the former Minister of Tourism of Seychelles and also the Vice President of World Tourism Network, would like to present. And his speech will be about the role of small. Island nations. Palan, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Always a bad time to be talking is after lunch. <laughs> because with a full belly, you, you tend to fall asleep. But I will try to tell it all on what Jorgen and the organizers, Moody, asked me to speak about role of small island states. Obviously, I come from the Seychelles, very small island state, much smaller than Bali. Even though Bali is part of the bigger Indonesia complex, Seychelles has 115 islands with only 100,000 people. So when you see a Seychelles passport holder, as they saw me when I landed in Jakarta last night, they see a passport and they look two or three times if it's a country. And then they ask you two questions. Where is it? And when I get myself more entangled, it's by saying, well, it's in Africa. And the first question is, why are you white? But I get that everywhere, not just here. And you get used to it after a while. But this afternoon, before looking at the role of small island states, this group of very important states in the world of tourism, talk to anybody about Indonesia. 
I said, do you know Indonesia? The first word that comes out of their mouth is Bali. And I know in Jakarta, I did some work there some two years ago, and I told members of the government, you have to do something. <coughs> People will believe Bali is the capital of Indonesia if you don't shake the rest of Indonesia. But before starting to explain the role, the real role of small islands in the complex world of tourism, islands play an important part, obviously. We have to determine what is tourism, what makes tourism tick, what really are we after? What are we trying to save? And what do we say it is when we talk about tourism? Is it just the money that business people put in the bank monthly? Or is it more than that? And I said this in starting because I wanted to invite somebody to join me here. He is also from an island. He is also from a small island. There was a lady I was meant to invite as well, but she's disappeared. I threatened her at lunchtime that I would bring her in as well to be in the front. But I think she panicked and ran away. So, but the, the gentleman I'm going to invite comes from Sri Lanka. And by default, when I chatted to him at lunchtime, his auntie, one of his aunties, because I have a lot of aunties in Sri Lanka, one of his aunties came from Seychelles. So that was rather amazing to hear. But let me invite Alston Kopp to come up to sing a little song for you. He won't sing a long song, but he'll sing a little song to put everybody into a mood and wake everybody up this afternoon before we, we get more involved in the long process after me. Alton, for those who doesn't know, Alston, for those who don't know, very famous for, for Bali. I won't tell you the song that he sang for Bali. Many years ago, he sang a song for Bali. He coined the song. And today, he is the man playing behind Jeffrey Lippmann, putting forward the call for sustainability, for preservation, for keeping the world alive. If we keep on, you know, there were two doctors, I think they've disappeared, but uh, no, they're, they're still there. There were two doctors here this morning and they're still at the back. If we keep on eating every day, after a while we swell up and then we meet the doctor because we'll find that we are sick. But if we keep on diving into tourism, just playing the numbers game, forgetting that there is more than just number and number and number then we find that we destroy what brings the people to us awesome come up let's give him a round of applause as he's coming up he's an artist so they're allowed to be temperamental so he's allowed to take his time that's two island people next to each other Up in the air, everywhere I look around, where? Love is in the air, every side and every side. And I don't know why people don't know why people, but there's something that I must believe in. And it's there when I look in your eyes. Bodies in the air, everywhere I look around. And bodies in my head, every sight and every sound. And I don't know if I be foolish. Don't know if I be sad. But it's something that I must believe you. And it's there, even when you make me mad, I change a little bit. Okay, everybody, join me in the chorus. This is an old song. And you all know it. Here we go. Love is in the air. 
Things have gone from bad to worse, and we just hope that 10 years from now we'll, there will be a time of that we'll be talking about. So enjoy this next video, and I'll sing, and I'll sing the words, and you can just watch the video. Please, thank you. Something new, trying to live. 
Thank you. 